Hi, I'm Nate Adams, sometimes known as Nate the House Whisperer, and uh, wanted to show you through uh, the operation of my Bosch heat pump on my house um, and show it through the Emporia View web app. So the Emporia View is a, a pretty nice little energy monitor that's not very expensive. It's 150 bucks, uh, which is incredible uh, because just a few years ago, like three or four years ago, the same capability would have cost pushing $1,000. So uh, it's nice that technology has come this far. Uh, but um, let's see here. I want to get back to home. There we are. Uh, so what's nice about this is, well, while their phone app is quite good and it actually mirrors a lot of this, things are a little bit easier to see in some ways on the, uh, the web app. So here's Mountain Escape. So that's our house in West Virginia here. And the river house is up in Ohio. It's right on the Cuyahoga River, hence the name. Um, you can use separate plugs. So these are both at the river house. Uh, so the dehumidifier, it pulls about 200 watts with the air handler on that. And then uh, we have a little space heater in the bathroom. So that house is still electric heat because um, we spent the money we were going to spend on HVAC on this house. <laughs> so, oops, um, life can move around. But uh, let's take a look at the Bosch. And so this is a two slash three ton Bosch. It has a switch that you can go back and forth. I have it switched down to two because I want to increase its run time. Uh, and I want to take a look at, we had a cold snap the other day. In fact, here, let me, uh, I'll show you resistance first. Resistance is actually on the air handler or AHU, air handler unit. Um, so there you can see the air handler just turned off and then clicked on a little bit. Uh, but you can move this around. So this is the seconds. So you can see it moving around in its consumption a little bit. Uh, but let's look at hours because back on Friday, so see here where uh, the air handler is generally pulling about half a kilowatt an hour, an hour or thereabouts. Uh, so it's going to be pulling this much when it's running primarily in high stage, which is 100%. It pulls about 120 watts. And then on uh, low stage, which I have presently set at 50% uh, airflow, that pulls about 57 watts. Um, and so when you put that through an hour, you know, 100 watts through an hour burns a kilowatt hour. Um, if I'm doing my math right on that. Uh, and then they will use a little bit of resistance as well. Nope, sorry, a thousand watts for an hour actually uses a kilowatt hour. So these hours here that are pushing uh, a kilowatt hour, those had some resistance in them. And the other ones are just the air handler running. But note that we have a big spike here. So this was back, see, Friday. This is 4, 5, 6 a.m., uh, for whatever reason, it didn't use much for the next hour, and then uh, it used a bunch the next two hours. So the this house, it's 1,150 square feet. Um, it is a manufactured home. Uh, it's 1,150 square feet. I pulled all the insulation out from underneath, so it's actually a manufactured home. I pulled the insulation out. So the crawl space is completely uninsulated as it stands, which is very hard on load. So I have the set, uh, the, the heat pump set to two tons, but uh, it has a three ton load at design. So as this was happening, it was about 10 degrees outside, which is our design temperature here, which means we only spend 1% of the year or 88 hours a year below that temperature. Uh, so uh, that's what you're seeing here. And I thought this was pretty cool. So all of this usage right here, this works out to 14 kilowatt hours total. So I have a three ton load house that only has two tons of capacity and to make up that difference for a cold morning was 14 kilowatt hours. It's not that much. Um, I mean, for reference, most houses use 30 to 50 kilowatt hours a day aside from water heat and space heat. So if you have an all gas home, you're probably still using 30 kilowatt hours a day. Um, pretty standard. Sometimes I see down to 15 or 20, but most homes are closer to 30. Uh, so, uh, uh, it kind of gives you an idea, 15, 14 kilowatt hours, not a huge deal. Um, so I was happy to see that. 
because uh, I I considered switching it to three tons, but you have to go outside, take a panel off. It's not a big deal, but it's, you know, 10 minutes, and then I got to go find the tools. Uh, but uh, I decided to just leave it to see what would happen, and this was an interesting result. What this basically means, by the way, is a 20-kilowatt-hour battery would have carried this no problem, uh, even if the grid was maxed out. So lots of ways to get there. All right, let's go take a look at the heat pump. So I'll show you hour by hour. Let's go back to Friday. So let's see, where, where are we? This is incredibly easy to see. Friday. Yeah, it was Friday morning. So some of this graphing could be better showing kind of where it is. Uh, but right in here, is where it was really cold. So we were looking at 4, 5, 6 a.m. Uh, so, uh, like I said, a 1,000 watts running full tilt pulls a kilowatt hour per hour. A ton basically works out to be a 1,000 watts. It's, it's going to vary a little bit. There's various games that can happen within that. But ballpark, a 1,000 watts is a ton. So if we're using two kilowatt hours an hour, uh, or two and a half, it's basically getting to two, two and a half tons. And that makes sense because it will pull as much as 2,500 watts, even though it's only supposed to pull uh, 2,000 for two tons. Uh, so that is what I'm seeing in the operation of it. So you can see the heat pump's just been running solid. It's been quite cold uh, here recently. Um, but like if I go back to the beginning of the month, so see we're, we're getting a lot lower. We're, you know, a little over a kilowatt hour per hour. Um, this was likely when I did a setback and then just getting back into December, like a, there was some pretty mild weather when, uh, like a, a, around Christmas time. So look at this, it's using a half a kilowatt hour an hour. Uh, so this is really helpful just to see what's going on and understand, but let's take a look at more detailed data. So here we are back to today and so this is minute by minute. You can see what it's doing with a heat pump. So it's ramping up. And now we are looking not at kilowatt hours, but at kilowatts. So this is the actual usage. So think of this as how fast you're going. This is the speedometer. So this is saying we're going 100 miles an hour versus driving 100 miles. Where uh, kilowatt hours, that's like 100 miles driven. Um, so that's the, the primary difference there. So you have to look up here to see what that is. Uh, but you can see it turned on and ran for what, about 10 minutes or thereabouts and then shut back off. And this is the curve that it does. So that's minute by minute. Let's take a look at a cycle second by second. So you can see these are basically the 1% increments that are kind of moving around. And what we peaked at, well, I can put it on that peak over here 2300 watts peak and you can see it ramped up pretty gradually you can see the jumps like it did a couple of bigger jumps here um, and it usually does this it ramps up it doesn't go super high but notice that there's no spike if you look at a single stage piece of equipment when it turns on you're going to get a huge spike probably to about double what it pulls normally uh, so if it's a, a three ton system which should pull 3000 watts when it's running it may jump to 6000 for a second when it turns on firing the compressor up. Uh, inverter systems start soft for the most part. I'm sure there's an exception, but I, I don't know what it is. Uh, they start soft, as you can see here, and then they kind of ramp themselves up. Uh, so that's what that looks like. Let's see. Has it run into frost cycle anywhere? Uh, and here's it. Uh, so these are pretty short pulls. I don't like seeing it run this little, and this is not something I'm happy with in the programming of it. I wish that um, it would not get so crazy and go up to two tons. I wish it would just run up to about a ton and just run. So in cooling mode, it only pulls 600 watts on low uh, low speed, which is 35%. In heating mode, it pulls about 2,000. Um, and you can't change that, so it's how it's programmed in the outdoor unit. We'll take a look at this. Here's a nice long pull. So it ran, well, at least an hour. Ah, there we are. This is what a defrost cycle looks like here. 
Um, so uh, it, it's running, and then it stops for a minute, and it kind of, eh, 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 and then comes back up and runs again. So when the outdoor unit turns into a block of ice, it turns the the heat pump around, turns it back into an air conditioner temporarily, pulls heat out of the house, melts the outdoor unit, which the, all the coil has turned into a literal block of ice. It melts that, and then it goes back to heat mode. So it's pretty fun to to watch them do that. Uh, let's see, and what was that time frame? 9.42. So let's go back to seconds and see. This is kind of a pain. Um, so Emporia, if you could put in something here where you can actually see or uh, type in what time you want, that would be great. And they only save uh, right now, if, if I remember correctly, um, two uh, days worth of minute and second data. Let's see, is it gonna, am I freaking it out? I went too far. All right, well, this part of the demonstration isn't gonna work like I was hoping it might. So be good to see second by second data here, but we're not going to. So let's flip back to our minute. Um, yeah, for whatever reason, it's just not working. Um, so this can happen sometimes, things aren't perfect. But in any case, you can see defrost cycles here, and then I showed how it ramps up and down, and so the defrost cycles a, a, a dip, and then it comes back up. So it's doing something that looks like this, only it's squigglier, like you saw earlier on the second by second. So that's what a Bosch heat pump is running like. Um, feel free to ask questions underneath. Uh, different systems are going to work differently. So the Bosch is a unique one. Uh, there's there's more coming out now, but the Bosch has been out for four years or thereabouts. So it's an inverter outdoor unit where it's just trying to hit a certain temperature on the coil, or it's actually suction pressure it's aiming for. Uh, and so as much airflow as you ask for, it's going to change the coil temperature and then it's going to ramp up to do whatever it needs to do to to hold the temperature or the suction pressure that it's looking for. Uh, and so it's a smart outdoor unit, but it doesn't talk to anything indoors. So it's not a communicating system. A communicating system is where the outdoor unit, the indoor unit, and the thermostat all talk to each other, and they know what's going on. Uh, and this is not that. I wanted to try it on this house um, uh, to understand its strengths and weaknesses. It's pretty good. Um, I'm not going to say it sucks. Uh, it's got really good cold temperature performance. Uh, it it's nice that it runs so low in cooling mode. It doesn't take very much to cool this house. It doesn't need anywhere near the capacity here. Uh, but uh, I do miss my carrier fully communicating stuff. So next system, I'm going to try something that's communicating if I can. Uh, but uh, I like experimenting with my own places when I can, because then the only person that can be mad is me, um, rather than uh, experimenting on a client home. So uh, anyway, I hope this was helpful and get an idea of what a Bosch heat pump looks like. Talk to you soon. I'm Nate Adams. Bye-bye. <laughs>